good. I'm in the frame and everything that you want. Hang on a second. Again. I gotta go higher. You're yeah. You're such a tall guy, man. You're better. That's yeah. better. Now you're in the frame. I don't wanna get too high. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, my name's Dana Larson, and I'm just gonna assume that you know nothing about what I'm doing and just start from scratch there. So. I've been involved in this effort for 20 odd years and uh, my main business effort is the Vancouver Dispensary Society. We serve four and a half thousand patients across the lower mainland and across Canada by mail order. Although these days I'm really just a figurehead there rather than someone who actually is doing any work. Um, but uh, my main point, my main challenge right now is the Sensible BC campaign. And this has actually grown into something that is uh, much better and bigger than I really could have dreamed it was going to be when I first launched this uh, last year. And uh, Sensible BC is about changing the marijuana laws in British Columbia as a province, not waiting for the federal government to get their act together, but making some initial important steps here in British Columbia. So I got together with Kirk Tusaw. We wrote a law called the Sensible Policing Act. This law does four very specific things that are all within provincial jurisdiction. The Sensible Policing Act stops all arrests and searches for marijuana possession in British Columbia. And we do that by amending the Police Act to instruct the police to make that their absolute lowest priority so that no resources and no time are spent on searching or arresting anybody for marijuana possession. The second thing that our law does is it amends the Liquor Control Act so that a minor caught in possession of marijuana has it treated exactly the same as, but no more severely than, if it was alcohol. So they're not criminally charged, they're not handcuffed or arrested, but an officer could confiscate it from, from a minor who didn't have a medical note of some kind. The third thing that our law does is it mandates the BC Attorney General to formally call upon the federal government to repeal marijuana prohibition because these are ultimately federal laws. Unless we're going to make our own country here, there's got to be a change at the federal level. So we want them to remove marijuana from the Controlled Drugs and Substances Act or just to give British Columbia an exemption from that legislation. The Minister of Health can give any person or class of person an exemption from any aspect of the drug laws so they could allow British Columbia to do something different and not impose it on the other provinces if they wanted to. And the last thing that our law does is creates a provincial commission to figure out the kind of things that you were talking about. What the rules and regulations around legalized marijuana are going to be. How do you grow your own? What are the age limits? How do we label it? How do we deal with medical use? All that kind of stuff. And we'll have some very good examples from Washington and Colorado to look at. They're going to be putting their final rules in place over the next couple of weeks. To get this law passed, of course, it'd be wonderful if the government of the day would just become enlightened and pass this law. And we do have friends in both sides of the legislature, on the NDP and the Liberals, but those friends are not in the leadership roles of those parties. So we're going to get this law passed through a referendum, exactly how we got the HST defeated in this province. So I've been traveling around, talking to people, trying to register people as canvassers for the campaign. That's our main effort. If you want to help collect signatures, you've got to be registered as a canvasser, or you can't collect signatures. The Fight HST campaign had over 6,000 canvassers by the time they got into the final stages of their campaign. Right now, we've registered about 12 to 1,300, which is a very good start. And like them, I expect about half of our canvassers will come in after we start collecting signatures. We start collecting signatures on September 9th. Seemed like a long way away when I first launched this thing last September. Oh, it's a year away now. It's I can barely sleep at night. It's coming up so soon. Time is definitely is definitely uh, uh, getting shorter and shorter for us to make this happen. But we've got people all around the province who are getting excited about this campaign. We've got a lot of regional organizers, and what this what this has been about, and for me, how I how I see it is when I travel around to all these different communities, and I did a tour of 50 cities and towns last fall. This spring, I did 32 cities and towns throughout the interior and central BC, then another dozen on Vancouver Island. Often we're just meeting at a Tim Hortons at 2 o'clock in the afternoon on a Wednesday, so not everybody can make it to these things. We've still had quite strong turnouts, and the important thing is that those who show up are the ones who actually want to get involved and who actually want to become canvassers and volunteers for our campaign. Uh, after I get back, I've got a bunch of dates in the Lower Mainland, putting on events in libraries and community halls and things like that, talking to people, trying to sign up more canvassers to make this a reality. But I will say that this has exceeded my expectations so far in so many ways. We've had such incredible good luck since we launched this campaign. So many good things have happened, of course. Right after we launched, the Union of BC Municipalities came out and supported decriminalization and legalization. Then Washington and Colorado had their votes and, and changed their laws. And Bob won the lottery and has become by far our largest donor to our campaign, so that 
Uh, uh, we've had the funding that we need to help make this kind of change happen. But unfortunately, we can't just write a check for this campaign to succeed. It involves people <coughs> getting involved at the grassroots level. The money helped us to reach those people and to get our message, to print up flyers and buttons and pamphlets and all that kind of stuff. But it's not ultimately about the money. It's about people getting involved and people getting out there and getting into their communities. And I've, I've had this said to me over and over again while I've been traveling around the province. I've been waiting for something like this to happen. And over the years, so many people have asked me, Dana, what can I do to help change the marijuana laws? I want to get involved. And the answers I have are usually not very good ones. I either tell them, oh, write a letter to your local newspaper, make a meeting with your MLA, and those are good things to do, but not that fulfilling, and ultimately, that's not going to be enough to get us over the top. Or else the answers I have are things like, well, open up a dispensary and then donate all your profits to legalization. And that's a good idea too, but most people can't do stuff like that. It's not within their reach and their abilities to make those kind of things happen. But this campaign, every single person can get involved. If you've got five minutes a day, if you've got five hours a day, whatever you can contribute, everybody can get involved and make a difference and I feel like there's so many people that I've been meeting that have been waiting for their chance to do something and they just didn't know what to do and now I've got a job for them to do go out there and get some signatures get on our phones and start calling people get on the computer help us do data entry we got a lot of jobs that need doing you can make a difference you can get involved every single person can do something to make this campaign a success and it has been very rewarding for me to see People coming out, getting involved. We're opening an office in Victoria. Got nothing to do with that at all. They wanted to get one. They fundraised. They found a space. They made it happen. We've had so many people getting out in their communities. And we've had challenges too. You know, we've been blocked from attending several farmers markets. The Nanaimo bathtub race has cashed our check for us to have a table and then said, oh, we changed our mind actually. You're not appropriate at our event, even though a beer garden is appropriate at their event. <laughs> our political campaign to talk about changing the marijuana laws apparently is not appropriate. And we've also, the Rib Fest in, uh, in uh, Kamloops also blocked us from attending as well. And you'd think people smoking marijuana would do well at the Rib Fest and <laughs> be able to eat a lot of yummy ribs. But they also cast our check and then said, oh, actually, We've changed our mind. We don't think it's good to have you guys here. But whenever that happens, we turn adversity into positivity by getting media coverage, by making people who are being mean to us look like the bigoted jerks that they are. And, uh, and so, you know, we, we were always trying to turn, yeah, try and turn adversity into some kind of positivity or some kind of media coverage. But uh, I think we have a really good chance of making this happen now. I feel more stressed out because of that. Because when I started, I kind of thought, well, this is a long shot. We'll just see what happens. But now we can't screw it up. We've invested serious time and money into this campaign. It's, and it's very possible. Like, I do not want to be overly optimistic or give the impression that it's all a done deal because it is not by any means. We need to collect half a million signatures in less than 90 days. We need to be getting seven to 8,000 signatures every day while we're campaigning and while we're doing this. It's a vast amount. We miss one district and we fail. We need 10% of the registered voters in all 85 districts. If we just miss one, we get 9.99% in one district, the campaign does not succeed. Although that being said, even if we don't get all the signatures we get, and I don't even like thinking about that path, a lot of good things have come out of this campaign that certainly is not the end. Our legislation is still a law the province should pass. And it's harder to get on the ballot here than any other place in the world that I've seen. If we were in Washington, Colorado, this would have been a done deal already. It's very easy to get on the ballot in those places. But here in British Columbia, it's very hard. But I really think that this is definitely possible. People are getting involved. But I hope that you, if you're from British Columbia, we'll sign up as a canvasser if you have it already, sign up 10 or 20 of your friends to be canvassers, <clears throat> and make sure that we have the support in every community that we need to make this happen, because it is doable, and when we succeed in getting these signatures, it will be transformative in British Columbia and in Canada. This will be the trigger that we need to push this over the top, because it's easy to talk about this stuff. It's easy for Trudeau to say, yeah, when I'm Prime Minister, I'll do something about it. But when people are actually in a position of power to make that change happen, they stall, they delay, they do not want to do it. And we've seen in the 20 American states that legalize medical marijuana, I think now just the first ones where it's starting to be the government of the state doing it themselves without a referendum. But it was referendum after referendum after referendum, always with opposition from both political parties. One of the few things Democrats and Republicans can agree on is that they don't want marijuana law reform and that they fight it tooth and nail. And so here in BC it's the same thing, you know, we've got two parties, they're, they'll talk about it maybe a little bit, but they don't want to help us, so it's about bypassing politicians and doing this with people power. That's how they did it in the states, that's how we can do it here. And if we make this happen, the politicians will come to heel, they will 
follow the will of the people. And if we get this thing done and they don't, then we're going to do some very extreme civil disobedience. Yeah. But we'll deal with that if that ever happens. Yeah. But this can be done. We can make this happen. So Sensible BC is what it's all about. Uh, I don't know if I anything I didn't address or anything I should have mentioned or not. I've got these booklets with me that I gave to every MLA, many of our MPs in British Columbia, all of the mayors and councils I think should have gotten one. I hope you did. I don't know. Yeah, okay, good stuff. And, um, and so I'm hoping that we're going to you know, build some political support there as well. The mayors, the UBCM is having their next meeting this coming September. It'd be nice if they would endorse our legislation since they endorsed the concept of changing the marijuana laws. But like I said, ultimately, I don't even care if they support us or not. All I want is the people of British Columbia to support our campaign. And they are there, and they're excited, and they want to make a difference, and so that's very gratifying to me to see. I think that's it. One other thing I'm going to mention, which is totally separate, I wrote a book called Harry Pothead and the Marijuana Stone, and I have just made a deal for the movie rights for that book, and they're working on a movie. It's still a very potential thing. I don't want to get too excited, but there might be a Harry Pothead movie coming out in the next couple of years. A live action, big budget, real movie with real actors and real stuff using hemp fields in Canada. They want to film it in Washington so they can use real marijuana to film it with because it's legal people to use it there. They can film their outdoor hemp field shots in Canada. But that would be very exciting as well. It's a whole different thing. But uh, they were at the Seattle Hemp Fest promoting there, and I wasn't there. But if anybody was, yeah. they had some books and they had some stuff going on there. So it's in the program, I think. Yeah. So there you go. So that was good. But anyway, sensible BC is the main thing. Harry Potter is just kind of a fun side thing. But that's my talk. Thank you very much. <laughs>